Hey, I'm Callie Lewis. You're watching Geek Brief TV. This is Brief 659. I don't know what we're going to do seven shows from now. If you're a developer or an extreme early adopter, you might have tried the developer version of Chrome for OS X. It looks like we'll be getting a real live beta version on the Mac by December. Windows users got Chrome 4.0 today, and that makes this a very short story, but I don't have anything more to say about it. While I'm announcing future releases, I might as well work in the info that we're getting about Microsoft's Project Natal into the same paragraph. It was announced in a private meeting in the UK that Natal will launch in late 2010 for between $50 and $84. I hope it's going to work on more than Xbox consoles, Natal is the way I want to control my computers. There will be at least 14 Natal-ready games at launch time if the sources, there's more than one, are right. Early podcasters fell in love with the Snowball USB mic from Blue Microphones way back in, I guess, 2005. Today, Blue announced a new USB mic that's also the world's first THX certified mic. It's called the Yeti USB, and it has a triple capsule array that provides four selectable audio patterns, omni, cardioid, stereo, and bidirectional. The mic also improves on the Snowball by adding my favorite feature from other USB mics like the Rode Podcaster. It has a headphone jack so that you can monitor vocals in real time with zero zero latency. Now, here's a question for you audio geeks. I understand that THX is a quality assurance standard. If you go to a theater that's THX certified, the promise is that you're hearing the audio sound as close as possible to the way the sound engineer wants you to hear it. If something is recorded with a THX certified mic, would the listener need to play the audio on a THX certified source to get the accurate reproduction? For example, I listen to some podcasts on a TiVo Series 3 HD and that's THX certified, but my iPhone isn't. Would it sound more accurate on my TiVo than my iPhone or would I even notice a difference? Answer in the comments so that everyone can see at www.geekbrief.tv. I bought an Xbox 360 Elite today for work, which makes it the fifth item in my home theater stack that requires ethernet. Fortunately, we recently added an eight switch so I've got room to grow. I was really kind of shocked when I realized it doesn't have wireless in built in. Now there's an adapter for that. It's selling at various outlets for under 90 bucks and it plugs into an Xbox's USB port. What if parking your car in a garage was like docking your iPod? You get home from work, your car's entertainment system connects to your home network and your car gets updated with new music and your favorite podcasts. The Rovi Automotive Solution does that. From what I can gather, it isn't something consumers will add on the aftermarket just yet. The pitch is to car and consumer electronics makers, so we may not start seeing it in action for a while, but the tech is ready to go. In addition to updating media on your car's entertainment system, it'll connect to your network to get metadata for CDs, DVDs, and Blu-ray discs. It'll also allow you to search wirelessly connected devices like phones and MP3 players from the head unit. My bet is Ford will be the first car maker to include this technology. What do you think? We finalized the details about the New York meetup. We're joining up with gadget blogger extraordinaire John Biggs from Crunch Gear on Friday, November 20th at 7 o'clock p.m. at the Heartland Brewery. Details are at callielewis.me slash New York Meetup. Brief 659 was brought to you by Angie'sList.com slash geek. We just use Angie's List to find a painter, and he's going to be here in the morning at 8 a.m., so I have to get to bed. Promo code geek saves you 25% when you join the list. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Callie Lewis. Bye. Or I should say good night.